there. So I want to talk to a little bit about vision. Uh, vision is more than just seeing 2020. Most people think of uh, vision as just the clarity of sight. And really what vision all encompasses is the ability of gathering visual information efficiently and then processing uh, what we're seeing in our brain. Um, it tells our body where we are in space and it identifies what we are seeing and locates where things are. It guides where our mod, uh, motor movements are doing and coordinates with other senses. And research has shown that 80% of what a child learns is presented visually. And now that's even a much higher percentage since um, more kids are learning from home. Unfortunately, our visual system was not designed for prolonged near point use on digital devices. Um, it was um, designed to be able to look far and near and far and near, um, but not a prolonged uh, use for up close. So when I'm looking at um, uh, a ch child's visual gathering information um, skills, we're looking at three different categories. The first is the eye movements, which is looking at how the eyes um, fixate and follow, what we call a pursuit. Um, also how they jump fixate from one point to another, which is called a saccade. And both of those eye movements are involved with learning and uh, because they're with reading, with locating things that are on a computer screen, looking at the computer, then at your book, and then your paper. Um, and so if those skills are not working um, or developed correctly for their age group, then, uh, then it's much more difficult. We're now seeing uh, children that are in kindergarten that are on the computer um, with their digital learning for up to five hours a day rather than being in the playground. So we're, um, we're concerned, of course, that they're not getting the movement that you need in order to develop some of these skills. Our focusing system is uh, controlled by the lens that's on the inside of the eye. The lens changes its shape in order uh, to focus from far and then to near, kind of like a camera lens when you're focusing at far and then near. And it has to be very flexible and accurate um, in order to focus at where you want to look. Um, as a child, it should be very flexible. As we get older, over 40, then that lens becomes um, less flexible and that's when we start needing uh, reading glasses and bifocals. But we should see that the focusing system is uh, nice working properly at a child's age. And then the most difficult um, and challenging visual uh, skill is the how coordinating the two eyes to work together as a team. Uh, so you have the image of the right eye and then the image of the left eye, and you want them to not only overlap, but to fuse to make one percept that has depth. If you have problems with your eye teaming ability, whether one eye has a tendency to cross or turn out or up or down, then that can cause a lot of problems with, uh, with learning and with actually just uh, seeing through life. So here are some of the signs and symptoms of visual fatigue that can occur when you're using a computer for prolonged periods of time. One of the things with our focusing system is that um, when the lens on the inside of the eye goes into a spasm, um, it can cause a frontal or temporal achy headache. Not necessarily a pulsating um, headache, but an achy pain. Um, so if your child is complaining of headaches, then that's something to be concerned and check their vision for. If they also- And Dr. Daniel, I yes. um, apologize for interrupting here. I just want to make sure, are you sharing your screen on anything yet? Are you guys seeing the screen? I don't see your screen right now, so I just want to make sure that the participants can also see it as well. If you could click share screen and- because you're sharing okay. such amazing information. Let me choose share screen again. Okay, so you didn't see that first part. Okay. There we go, there we go. <laughs> Perfect, thank you so much. Thank you for interrupting, that's helpful. <laughs> so let me go through. This is my about vision and our eye movements. Now we're on this right screen. Thank you, Brooke. 
Uh, so one of the things that happens is that um, if the eyes are not converging in order to look at the screen, then you'll get a pulling sensation that's between the eyes. And so children and adults will complain that um, their, eyes are, their eyes are achy and there's that pulling sensation. One of the other things that happens is that um, research watery. Well, the reason why is that with a dry eye, when after you're staring, the tear uh, composition uh, breaks up and it causes reflex tearing that causes more of a watery, drippy eyes. So if you see your child have watery eyes or they're glassy or red, um, then that can be too much time that has been being spent on the computer. You may also see them rubbing their eyes and rubbing the eyes is one of the symptoms of the two eyes not coordinating together as a team. Uh, it could also be a symptom of allergies and we're having an increase of that um, because of the local fires and the smoke that we are having in the air and then combined with having our eyes staring at a computer a long time we're getting more problems with um, uh, children with having dry and irritated and allergy eyes. And have any of you had um, your eyes where they just start twitching? Um, that is a cause, one of the main causes of eye twitching is stress. And that can be visual stress or it can be um, stress on the body. And so um, one of the things to look out for is if your child has um, some eye twitching, then there are some things that I'm gonna to talk to you a little later about to um, help prevent that. And squinting, squinting is one of the symptoms that they're not seeing well, um, that they're trying to focus. The um, focusing system may not be working. Um, they have a uncorrected um, refractive error, either they're nearsighted or farsighted or have astigmatism, especially with astigmatism, or they're sensitive to light. One of the um, most frustrating uh, symptoms to have for a child or an adult is um, to have double vision. And uh, I used to have double vision. I had it for about 17 years. <laughs> and I never complained that I saw double, um, but it's because I never knew any different. Um, children don't complain necessarily that they see double because that's always what they've experienced and they don't know what normal looks like. Um, so what they usually will complain of is that my vision is confusing or um, the words are floating on the page or it's blurry. So one of the um, compensations that children will do is that they'll close one eye. Um, you look at my pictures of when I was a kid, I had the left eye closed all the time because my eyes did not coordinate together as a team well. Um, or they cover their eye with their hand. You'll see some kids do this or they'll put their hair in front of one of I. And what that's doing is that it's decreasing um, the input from one eye so that they don't see double. Also look out for head turns or head tilts. If one eye has, um, is pointing higher than the other, if you tilt your head, then the images of the eyes will be next to each other and then they confuse better. Um, but the problem with that is that you can get a neck ache and, um, and a fixed posture to where their head is tilted all the time. A head turn like this is using just one eye also because the nose is blocking the image from the other eye. We talked about um, losing your place when reading and that's because of some double vision or the eyes not um, tracking well in that they're not going from left to right in um, uh, orderly pa uh, fashion, or the images are splitting into two. Now, when they do that, the brain doesn't like to see two, so it'll shut off one eye. So now uh, the images that were here get jumped. And so it causes um, a loss of place when they're reading, and it causes them to have decreased comprehension because they're missing part of that information. Maybe they also may see that the, their depth perception is affected and that the images will appear to move. And that can make them nauseous and dizzy. Um, 
they may, in order to compensate, put their head close to the computer or way far away from the computer or just avoid the computer in order to um, avoid the headaches and eye strain that you get um, from your system not working well. Now, if you have these problems, um, it's very obvious that kids will want to avoid to do the work that is in front of them. Um, so if you're getting an achy, dry, red eyes and pulling sensation, double vision, um, you'll have decreased visual attention. Um, their posture will be poor, they'll have slouching, their head will be on the table, they'll try to lay down, they'll be complaining, fidgety, and, and as I talked about, they'll have that neck and shoulder pain. Um, some of the signs for focusing problems is that they can't um, change focus from near to far um, as easily. And so when they're on the computer for prolonged time, then that lens on the inside of the eye goes into a spasm. Then it get, gets blurry when they look up in the distance. And what that can do is cause an increase in nearsightedness, where they start to need glasses for the distance. Um, and this is becoming a, uh, an epidemic problem um, throughout the world to where um, those who are uh, digitally learning, um, like those in China, they have 95% of people in China wear glasses for nearsightedness. And so there's a lot of research going into how to slow that uh, process down. And one of the best things to do is to um, relax your visual system and train them so that they do work efficiently and give yourself a break. So what do you do to help all of these issues? Um, one of the first thing is to pay attention to what we call visual hygiene. And that is to um, set up your workstation so that you're in the correct posture, that um, you're at a desk rather than laying in bed or on the couch or on the floor. Um, you want your laptop or computer screen to be at eye level or just a little bit down from eye level. You want your arms to be at a 90 degree angle. And um, the most importantly is you want your um, child's feet to be on the floor or on um, a, a bench or something to where their feet are not dangling um, because that helps keep the posture in an upright position so that the eyes can then coordinate together as a team and focus um, with, in a straight ahead fashion. So we talked about supporting the feet and encouraging desk work. Um, one of the other things that is recommended is the use of a slant board. And a slant board um, puts the paper or book that um, the child is working on um, at an angle to where it's best for um, their vision to uh, keep their eyes to working together as a team and focus from the top to the bottom of the page and it's at an equal amount. So it, it has to where it decreases the demand on the visual system. Uh, one of these, the slant boards, there's a lot of them. If you Google slant board, there's a lot of them that um, are sold online. And um, so I, you can also use, if you don't have a slant board, uh, a three inch three ring binder um, and an empty binder that is slanted and you put your, um, your paper or your book on the slant board. Lighting makes a big, diff uh, uh, big difference as well. And uh, you want to have as much natural lighting, um, but have it facing towards the side. Um, if you have the, uh, an open window that's behind you, the glare from the light is gonna go against the screen. If you have the light, uh, the, the window in front of you, then you're gonna have the glare directly into your eyes. So you want to position their workstation so that the light is coming from the side. Um, you also would do well to have a full spectrum uh, desk light lamp. Um, they make many brands of this, but it's uh, a special type of light that mimics the um, full spectrum light that you have from outside. So if you don't have windows, it's good to get a desk lamp, even if the room is lit by other lighting. Because what this type of full spectrum does, light does is that it decreases that focusing lock as well. Uh, one of the brands that um, I use is the Ot Light. Um, 
I'm not, I don't have any money that they give me for saying that, but Ot lights are um, sold in fabric stores and I'm a seamstress and I'm in my sewing room right now. <laughs> and with a uh, fabric, it's, we use these lights in order to match the, um, the thread to the fabric. Um, and so they, um, but they're very relaxing to the eyes, even when the other eye, um, lights are on. So you can do the work a lot longer without getting tired. You also want to adjust the um, brightness on your computer to be approximately the same as the brightness in the surrounding workstation. So you don't want to have it overly bright or overly dim. Um, and you don't want to be working in the dark uh, because that does put more strain on the central visual system because you're losing your peripheral system. And that will um, be more um, stressful for the eyes. Uh, you also want to encourage drinking water because you're, um, you don't want to um, have your child be dehydrated. Um, that hydration is very important for the tears, um, but it's also important for um, learning and the brain health of your, uh, of your brain. The most important slide in here is to remember to take a break from the computer use um, and get up and move. Um, as Dinah was talking, she learned, um, and she's incorporated into her vision therapy um, uh, with her students, a lot of movement um, because visual um, skills are learned from movement skills. And when you don't move, then the visual system gets locked up. And so um, I had a patient um, yesterday who I asked him, um, you know, how long are you working on the computer for your classes? And he said, five hours. He had two breaks and during those five hours and I asked him, what do you do during your breaks? And he goes, I work on my tablet. And I'm like, well, that's the one thing that I want you to stop. <laughs> I said, during your breaks, you need to get up and move. You need to go out and kick a ball. You need to jump rope. You need to go biking. You need to do jumping jacks. You just need to get up and move your body um, because that's going to help recalibrate um, your visual system after prolonged work. And like I said before, it decreases that chance of becoming nearsighted and, and needing glasses for far away. So these are some um, things that you can do to get ready to um, work in the morning on uh, your with your student online. Um, what we do, we call them eye stretches and these get the muscles to be working in the full range of motion. So what you do is you're going to cover up one eye, keeping your head straight. You're going to look up as high as you can go and hold it for five seconds. You want to breathe through this so that you're not straining and looking up and then you relax looking straight ahead. Then you're gonna look over to the side, to the left for five seconds, and then straight ahead and then down and then to the right. So it's like in a plus pattern. Then you're gonna do the same thing in an X pattern, look up and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the left and up and to the left. And what that does is work on all of the six muscles on, on each eye, six on each eye, to be um, fully stretched, just like you do your warm up stretches to go work out. The other thing that you want to do is after 20 minutes of working on the computer, you want to blink and squeeze your eyes about 10 times. And what that's doing is squeezing the um, meibomian glands, which um, squeeze out the oil for your tears so that you have better tears. And um, like I said, the research shows we blink two thirds less um, when we're working on a computer than when we're working on paper. And so you need to get those tears to be pumping and um, to lubricate your eyes. So the American Optometric Association has been um, publicizing the 2020 rule um, that whenever you're working on a computer to prevent digital eye strain, you take a 20 second break every 20 minutes and look at something 20 feet away. Um, and that again is to protect your eyes from becoming more nearsighted. It releases the focusing system and gives a break to the eye tuning system. So do our children need computer and reading glasses? This is a very common question that I'm getting a lot. Um, and 
there are, when you talk to your doctor, they'll give recommendations depending on how their examination of the child um, is going. So if, um, if they have functional vision problems like I've been discussing, then reading glasses is one of the treatment options that we use. Um, and I think reading and computer, it's for both. Um, the reading glasses can also, if we start to see an increase in the nearsightedness, um, then we can prescribe reading glasses for close-up use only, even if they see 20-20 in the, in the distance, to help slow down that increase in myopia. And if you're working consistently on a digital device for long periods of time, then computer glasses are a good option. Um, all my children have, uh, well, three of my children have excellent vision. Um, they see 2020 near and far, but they all have um, computer glasses with um, blue light blocking lenses um, when they're working on the computer because they were all in college and did lots of, um, they were working on the computer all day, all night long. My son, who's autistic, um, he works on an iPad all day long from morning to evening because he uses that as his communication device. And so that's his voice. Um, so he also has um, special lenses that give more magnification up close and also has a, a blue blocking lens. So what is this blue blocking lens that I'm talking about? Um, the computer emits a certain uh, wavelength of light, of blue light, that can be harmful to the visual system, as well as causing um, the visual system to lock up. It can cause um, problems with the uh, retina, the tissue on the back of the eye, as well as the lens on the inside of the eye. And so what they do is it, the glasses have a um, anti-reflective or anti-glare coating that blocks out that particular wavelength of light. What they did find is that when you're working on a computer all day that, um, and you're exposed to this um, blue light, and especially if you're working on a computer into the evening, um, that that disrupts our serotonin levels and our sleep levels. And so you may have children that are having a hard time relaxing and getting uh, sleepy to go to bed. You want to stop, um, you know, ideally working on a computer screen one to two hours before you go to bed. Um, and then wearing the blue blocking light um, uh, glasses can help with um, uh, decreasing that blue light exposure in case you are studying through the evening so that you can go to sleep at night. So when to Dr. see- Dr. Daniel, we actually have a, a good question that came in through the chat. I know we've got some question and answer, but since it's particularly okay. on the, the topic, um, are computer glasses and blue light blocking lenses the same thing? That's a great question. Yes and no. <laughs> and so with um, computer glasses can have um, a blue blocking lens that has the anti-reflective glare, but they can also have extra magnification that brings the focal point of the, the magnification lens, brings the focal point to the exact um, uh, distance of the computer screen so it relaxes the eyes. Some of the over-the-counter blue blocking lenses may not have the magnification um, that is in the lens. And you want to have a, an eye exam to see if those over-the-counter glasses will even work for your child. Because if they have um, in a different prescription in one eye compared to the other, the blue blocking glasses that are over-the-counter may not be the wise choice because they may still cause problems with the two eyes coordinating together as a team. So a prescription computer glass that has the anti-glare will have the right balance um, of the prescription so each eye sees equally well. We have another question, but no, okay. So if it's been more than one year since your child's eye exam, um, bring them in um, because that's, you want to check for their eye health and especially now getting their back to school um, eye exam is really important um, so that your doctor can discuss um, with you and your, uh, your child or your student um, the visual uh, things that they should do for to best utilize their eyes. Um, if they don't, uh, your child's symptoms don't improve with the suggested treatments that we're going over, then definitely see the eye doctor, um, even if it's been less than a year since your last exam. 
Um, and you, and like we were saying with the things, if you need uh, or considering to get um, computer glasses, then um, have an exam to make sure that they're the right prescription. If you also notice a decreased attention or increased um, adverse behaviors in your child, then it's good to rule out a vision problem as one of the causes. And especially if you see a recent onset um, of difficulty seeing far away, um, and that's that nearsightedness that may be creeping up, then you need to see your eye doctor. And just all of the symptoms that we're talking about, if you notice those in your child, then um, this is a win-win. One of the options for treatment too is with the vision therapy program. Um, and most people don't know what vision therapy is. Um, vision therapy is a, um, a program that is um, where a therapist works with the child or an adult to help uh, learn and improve these particular visual efficiency skills um, that we've been talking about but also um, learn about where their body is in space, um, the difference if they have letter reversals or they can't tell their right from their left on their body, um, if they have um, uh, trouble processing what they're seeing, and if they have difficulty with visual attention, vision therapy helps out with that. And it's, it's I always say it's like piano lessons. You come once a week, um, um, for 45 minutes and we give you some activities to work on at home using lenses and prisms and filters and, um, and exercise equipment. And um, it's like going to the gym for your eyes and your brain. And, um, and then they come back and we give you the next harder step. So um, in some cases where the visual system is locked up, we need maybe six weeks to eight weeks of, um, of therapy sessions. Um, and some kids who have um, more learning problems and um, or have other visual problems that um, are exacerbating um, their learning may need longer vision therapy sessions. So these are our doctors, um, Dr. Dukes, uh, myself, my husband, Dr. Davis, and Dr. Janess. Um, all of us um, treat these visual conditions. Um, other than my husband, the other three doctors are um, specialists in uh, vision therapy. And uh, so uh, we, we do inter-refer between um, each doctor on each specialty that we have. And here's a picture of our four vision therapists. Um, Dinah is a certified vision therapist. And um, we have April who's going through the certification herself. And Melissa and Felicia who have been, Felicia's been a therapist with us for over 15 years. And Melissa who's just beginning. So Dinah, um, I'm gonna stop sharing so Dinah can show some of her slides that she has. And then we'll be able to- 